part of the event. Um, just to crack a joke, what did the lion tell? Uh, <laughs> as if there are not enough jokes already. Um, the kid in all of us, okay? So, what did the lion say when it met the other animals in the forest? Pleased to eat you. <laughs> but we're all going to eat some yummy food later. Um, I don't know if I tell, uh, introduce myself. My name is Kezia. <laughs> I'm from South India. Um, and we are here to celebrate Indian culture. You all know that. Um, we all have busy schedules and so does this big church. More than a few activities happen each day in these, in these buildings. Yet, the love of Jesus in their hearts in the women's team from this church have squeezed this event in for all of us. So thankful to God and thankful to all the leadership team and the women's team here. Um, so do you all know that India is mentioned in the Bible? How many know that? Raise your hands. Yeah, India is actually mentioned in the Bible. The Holy Bible has been written by 40 different people, but inspired by one God, God the Holy Spirit. More like one person using 40 different pens. Okay. Um, just as the, we, we were 10 people in planning this whole event and we ourselves have so many opinions, so many suggestions and coming together, having a unity of mind itself is not easy. Imagine 40 people writing and all of the accounts tying up. And that has happened. There are no errors in the Bible and it is a book worth reading in your life, uh, for sure. Um, so many people have started reading it, trying to find faults with it and argue about it, but it has changed them, not the other way around. Because the Bible has words full of life. And the best part about Bible is the author is always present. Not like the books where you go to a book signing event and you may rarely get a second to get your copy signed. But this book has God in it. And whenever you read it, he's available for you to talk to you and even have time for you, for him, time for you to sit and discuss all your thoughts and your questions. That's the beauty of it. Um, I, for one, believe with my whole heart that Bible is true to my life. It is a guide map. It is like a lamp to light up my path. It is a rule book to keep me safe, a source of comfort and strength, and a textbook to learn from. All of that is made possible by the opportunity to talk and hear back from the author at any given time. So I share a genuine relationship, an authentic relationship, and a pure relationship with this author and he is none other than Lord Jesus Christ. It is so good that I have to share it with you. As women, we love shopping deals, right? We want to hear, we pass it along, like the 295 from Bath and Beyond, or Bed Bath, or Party and Bath, something. <laughs> or maybe the teeth that we all talk about for tomorrow. Something good happening to us, we definitely make a point to share with everybody, right? That's exactly the same thing. This, I mean, that's just, that's just a, that's just one tiny micro part of how much we feel about God and we have to share it. And that's what I'm about to say now. He loves me unconditionally. He calls me his daughter. We are talking about God. God and people. Father and daughter relationship. That is unheard of in other faiths. Um, he's ready to forgive and clear off my guilty conscience. He is kind, gentle, and his words are full of grace and compassion. He never says he's too busy to spend his time with me. He has all the riches and resources at his disposal, but he's never pride or haughty. He's so close to my heart, he understands everything I go through and loves me in spite of all my limitations. I grieve his heart from time to time, but he still loves me unconditionally. He loves to hear from me and waits for me each morning no matter how lazy or how much I sleep in. He loves when I say thanks 
and he loves it so much when I talk about him. So amazing, he's dear to all, our, all of us who put the trust in him. He puts up with me, waits patiently for me. He's so gentle to correct me, to um, uh, instruct me and help me with everything. He carries me on his shoulders, imagine that. We cannot imagine, even in our wildest imagination, someone so loving would be willing to carry us adults on their shoulders, right? Ugh, it's a little... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he promised he will carry me on his shoulders until my last breath. He adores me like I'm his only child. And he does the same thing to all those who trust in him. He has plans for my future, plans to bless me and helps me thrive. He heals me and lifts my spirits up. Um, he, he knows my tossing and turning and he bottles my tears. He's always available and knows what's on my mind. And all he expects from me is to go to him, talk to him, ask him, share everything. My dreams, my desires, my aspirations, aims, goals, struggles, struggles, tr trials, everything. He, I can even talk to him about what I feel about others. If they offended me, I go tell him. And he doesn't judge right away, but he is so gracious, he tells me um, if I am at fault. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Yeah, he's never too quick to judge or evaluate or punish. He never runs out of patience. He's a miracle worker, promise keeper. He never lets me down. He grieves with me along with me, alongside me, in, in times when I'm grieving. He surely knows the pain I feel. I can go on and on and on about him, but my desire for each one of you is to have and experience this kind of relationship with Jesus. I have a hope that I will be in heaven for sure. So it is not just about this temporary world I'm living in. It is also about my eternity that has been promised by God because of my belief in him. And everyone who believes in Jesus will have the same hope for eternity. I am not talking about religion, not at all. Please don't mistake me. It is not about religion, but it is a pure, loving relationship. Loves me unconditionally, forgives me at all times. I'm not making any of this up. All of these ladies, most of us, who believed in Jesus can attest to the same kind of love. Rest assured, he loves you the same and even more when you say yes to his invitation. Truly, that is all you need to do. The love of Jesus persuades us to do good for the community and in, in tangible ways. Um, now I'll tell a small illustration. Um, so the love of Jesus in our hearts goes beyond countries and miles and colors and all of that. And it is not just within ourselves, but we get to spread it to uh, everybody around us. That's the love of Jesus. It's not the love in our hearts. Our love tanks are always empty, but it is the love of Jesus who helps us to extend that love beyond. Christian missionaries have done so much for India by starting schools, hospitals, and showing love and teaching, ensuring even eradicating social evils. Yes, William Carey is one of the examples. He, along with the local school principal, Back in Sarampur, Calcutta, West Bengal is the state. He worked with that local principal and also uh, William Bentley, I think, and under the governorship of some other William. Um, <laughs> so many Williams today. Um, so all of them have persuaded the then ruling British colonizers to eradicate the social evils along with the social reformer, an Indian called, by name Raja Rao Mohan Roy, um, abolished sati system. This is a horrifically gore, insane, awful thing where when a husband dies, the wife will be also burned on that funeral pyre. Yes. So this is the love of Jesus. It bothered William Carey so much, he gathered the data, he provided all that he could, and uh, he persuaded, he has written articles, letters, and all of that to the then governor. And finally, it was abolished in 1829. Um, another example, uh, how many of you know or heard about CMC Velour? It's a hospital, Indians, question is to the Indians. CMC Velour, Christian Medical College. 
Um, it is so famous. All people all over the all over India go there to get treated. It is it is not exorbitant prices. And one one more thing in India, none of us have medical insurance, but we still get all the treatment we can have. <laughs> so maybe you just need to learn something there. <laughs> okay. So there was a little girl called Ida Scudder. Her dad was a missionary doctor in India, and she has noticed that women are dying in childbirth during those complications, and uh, there was nothing she could do because the husbands would not let those ladies be treated by male doctors. Hi, Holly. Um, yeah, and so she was a child at that time. She grew up, grew up to become a doctor, and she started and. Uh, she started treating patients. All she started was on a bullock cart. That was her first hospital, bullock cart. A cart run by bullocks, or ox, or bison, whatever it is. Um, now it became most famous in India, next to maybe one or two, in the entire India. So that's what is love of Jesus. To all my friends who think Christianity is a religion, I would beg to disagree, and I would like to tell you that this is just the love of Jesus. It is a relationship that you can share. One more thing. Someone asked who is the greatest force? So he, I mean, he was curious, so he thought fire is the um, greatest force on earth. So he went and asked fire. Uh, seems like you're the greatest. Is there anybody greater than you? And he said, yeah, um, maybe I am the greatest because everything is burned down by fire. But he says there's water that is more powerful than me because water quenches fire. So he goes and asks water. Seems like you're the most powerful. What do you say? He said, yeah, maybe, but there's one more powerful than I am, and that is uh, sun because sun evaporates water. And so the person goes and talks to water. What do you say? And he says, well, cla uh, uh, sun is done, right? Yes. Did I cover sun? Okay. <laughs> so the sun says, no, more powerful than I am is clouds because they come in my way. And then the clouds say, um, well, there are mountains who in my path I cannot, so I have to read out myself. And so, um, so this person asks mountains, and then he says, man, because he tears me down to build tunnels and roads and stuff. And then he says, oh, man is asked if he's the most powerful, and he says, no, death is most powerful because everybody succumbs to death. And then this person goes and asks death, are you the most powerful force on the universe? And he says, no, there's actually one person who has overcome death, and that is Jesus. Jesus is the only one who has actually died on the cross so that we can live. We all have sinned. Sin is nothing but disobeying God. Uh, not acknowledging Jesus as God is sin. And so that is disobedience. And for that, the penalty is death. And to escape from that, um, nobody has died. And uh, all the religions, actually the Puranas, the Vedas, the uh, Upanishads, and all of those talk about uh, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Why? Why blood? Some people might be thinking that is uh, gore or something like that, but there is life in blood. Just as one person in the beginning of this creation, sin entered into this world because of one person's disobedience. And so there is one person who needs to die to redeem us all from our sin, and that is Jesus. And um, <coughs> Um, why Jesus' blood? Why not someone else? Because Jesus is the only one who is sinless and pure and holy. As simple as that. So the Bible says, this is not just me saying or talking because some book said that, but he actually demonstrated this. This actually happened, as you can see on that picture. He died on the cross. He but that did not end there. He rose up. He is alive. He is in heaven. And he gives eternal life. Yes, everlasting. There is no death. And there is place for you in heaven too. Um, I have crossed my time way too much. Sorry about that. 
So one final request to all my dear Indian friends and to those other uh, very beautiful American friends who don't believe Jesus is the only true God, this is my heartfelt request. The only thing that you need to do to believe in Jesus is just one small thing. Say yes to his invitation. At this moment, he is trying to invite you all to say, my dear daughter, even though you still didn't believe in him, he still calls you his daughter. He's so loving. He's the epitome of love and grace. He's saying, my dear daughter, my arms are stretched out for you. Would you please come? I want you to be my child. I have prepared eternity for you in heaven. You know what? Heavens have streets of gold. I don't know who would want to not walk on those. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, all he's saying is, please come. Believe that I died for you. I am risen. I am in, I am in heaven. My blood I shed for you. Because that is the only way you can go to heaven. So I would like to give just a few seconds of silence so that if you feel the tug on your heart at this time from God himself, he wants to invite you with open arms, waiting for your yes. He is God, and yet he's waiting for us. Unlike rich people whom we want to, we crave to get their attention or, or, or in their company and they don't even, they ignore us. They don't know who they, we are, but we crave after that. We crawl for such things. Yet God, he is the creator of this entire universe. He has all the power and resources at his disposal. He is king of kings and lord of lords. All glory be to him, yet he's waiting for us to say yes. Thank you so much. God bless you.